Hey everybody, Fetty here. I don't do these shop tour, look at my stuff, nanny 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 kind of videos, but I, I guess I'm getting ready to do one because I get a lot of questions about my CNC machine. And it's really timely because if you've been wondering where I've been, I've spent the last few weeks doing some serious, serious upgrades to this machine. Now this machine came from CNC router parts. It's a 48 by 96 machine. And at the time, it was the pimpest machine that they offered. Now, they recently introduced a whole new machine, and hats off to them. They didn't leave people like me behind who had made a significant investment in their machine. They did it in a way that I could retrofit my stuff to their new super cool stuff. Now, a lot of the upgrades that I made are cosmetic, and I'll talk about those in a minute. But as far as the mechanical upgrades go, really three things. One is a spindle. And listen, I'm not, I'm not like a, a geeky CNC guy, so don't like hang me up on specifications because I don't know. I just turn it on and make stuff. But I think that that's like a three horsepower air-cooled spindle with RPM range from 8,000, I think, to 24,000. And I can tell you right now, I had a Bosch router on this thing, a 1617 Bosch, which is a good router. I like it a lot. But it's night and day between that and a spindle. The cut quality on this thing is so much better. It's so much quieter. It's just, it's just super cool. So the spindle is making all the difference in the world for me right now. The next thing is they replaced their VCON drive rail system with linear rails. Now the old system served me really well for a couple of years and I didn't have you know really any problems out of it but these things are incredibly accurate oh man it's smooth I mean I love these linear drive rails they're making all the difference in the world in accuracy and it's just it's just really nice. And then the third thing to, to run on those linear guide rails are the bearing blocks. Those things are super smooth and crisp. I don't know, man. I just feel like I'm in heaven. These are some really, really nice upgrades. So right here are the linear guide rails. And these things are precision ground and they are super smooth and super cool. So right here are the bearing blocks, the NEMA 34s. These bearing blocks are, man, they just glide. They're, they're really, really nice. Linear guide rails and bearing blocks on my Y axis. Got a brand new Z axis ball screw bearing box inside of there. Of course, the spindle. Now, when I first bought this machine, I didn't know anything about CNC, much less building one. And over the last couple of years, I've often said, if I had the chance to rebuild this machine, knowing what I know now and didn't know then, I would do some things different and I'd know what to pay attention to. Well, I, I was given that chance with these upgrades. I basically gutted this machine and took it down to the frame and rebuilt it. And I had the opportunity to you know, be a little more methodical and scientific and careful with what I was doing. So. The end result is right out of the gate, this machine was pretty doggone accurate. Honestly, the only thing that I have done since I finished the upgrades is I trammed the spindle a little bit. Didn't have to fuss with it a whole lot, but I trammed the spindle a little bit and I fly cut the spool board and now I'm making stuff. Now some of the cosmetic upgrades that I did, if you watched any of my old videos, you saw that I had my machine on a, on a wooden bench that was you know, pretty sturdy and it you know, did the job. But I went ahead and, and bought a leg kit from CNC router parts. They've improved their leg kit a lot. When, when I first bought my machine, I wasn't too hot and bothered over the leg kit that they offered, but now they've got this 80-20 extrusion kit. It's really nice. And the way that it's made underneath, I've got room for you know some dry goods storage and junk and contraband, whatever I need to, to stick under there. So it improved my ability to, you know, improve my space here in the shop. Now once I got the frame built, I got to looking and what I did was I, I skinned the inside of, of those legs with plywood and I thought, you know, I don't know, this, this plywood's pretty nice, but 
why don't I put some diamond plate on it? So put some diamond plate down the sides, just cosmetic, but man, it makes it look like super pimp and super professional and super cool. So I went for it. Now, once I got that diamond plate on it, I, I kind of stepped back and I looked and I thought, man, I kind of hate to like cover that diamond plate up with my control boxes. So why don't I build like a control station? So I built this control station and I'll show it to you in more detail in just a minute. But I made it in such a way that I've got good access to my e-stop right here. I've got my control boxes on the inside. But here's what's really cool about it. I need to build some handles for this thing. I might do a video of that. But open the lid and what do you have here? Got my computer monitor. So everything is tucked away real neatly in this control station. It's got casters on. I can move it around a little bit, but I'm limited by the, the cabling. But still, I think that's, that's pretty cool. So this added some space, but I gained some space underneath the table and I gained some space by having storage in here, so I think I kind of still netted out to the positive. But I think that's pretty cool. So this is the front of my control panel. I've got good access to the e-stop right here. Open it up. This is my main control box. Underneath here is the control box for the spindle, and down on the bottom is my PC and you know good storage in here place to keep stuff and that works out really good now moving to the back of the control box I've got good access to my ons and offs for the main controller and the spindle controller my enable disable button the fans can breathe and when the machine's running I have the top up so I've got good ventilation moving through this cabinet and it's not giving me any problems so far here you can see my diamond plate on the sides and the leg kit. Then underneath all the junk storage. Now I had to pull some 220 for the spindle, which really wasn't a problem. Well, it kind of was because I, <laughs> I ran out of space in my sub panel and had to stick a new sub panel in. But anyway, I pulled some 220 over for that, and uh, that, that's working out really good. Now, I'm not getting paid for what I'm about to say, but I think every once in a while, people deserve a shout-out, whether you get paid for it or not. I have never regretted buying my machine from CNC Router Parts. I have never regretted not buying an X-Card. I have never regretted not buying a ShopBot. And you know what? All these other companies, maybe they're pretty awesome. I don't know but I have never regretted buying my machine from CNC Router Parts. I've gotten to know them all. They're a great group of guys. They're passionate about CNC. They love what they do. And they're building a, well actually they have built a great company from the ground up. And uh, they've been really good to me. And I think they deserve a shout out from me. You can go back over two years ago and watch my videos. I've been using this machine and uh, it, it has served me well. Well, this machine with upgrades now, but it has served me well and I've never regretted buying the machine from them. So if you're in the market to buy a CNC machine, give them a call. Talk to them, shop them, build that trust relationship that you have to have before you make a big investment like this. Now, you don't have to buy a 4896 machine. Honestly, there's only like 5%, maybe 10% of the things that I make that I need a machine this big for. But those things that I do produce that I need this size machine, I produce quite a few of them. So it makes sense for me. But there's not that many things that I use this entire surface of the machine for. So you don't have to buy a 4896, you get a 4x4. Heck, they make a really pimp little desktop machine that would let you crank out really cool stuff all day long so so give them a call talk to them and uh see what you think i think it's worth your time to uh at least have a conversation now i get asked this question a lot so here's a disclaimer results may vary but i have paid for this machine many times over 
with the work that I've produced on it. So it is possible if you get out and if you're a hustler and you, you drum up the work and you work hard, you can pay for this machine because I've paid for it many times over. I'm not bragging. I, I promise I'm not. Y'all have gotten to know me. I'm not like some uppity guy. I am tremendously, tremendously grateful for the work that I've been, you know, given and, and been able to do. So, you know, a little bit of luck. Maybe it's a whole lot of luck, but I've been humping it too. So anyway, you know, just put that in your pocket and gnaw on it, but you can pay for an investment like this through the fruits of your labor. Now everything that I do doesn't involve this CNC machine, but I've been able to incorporate this machine into you know, 75 percent of the things that I make in one way or another and I just see it as another tool in the toolbox. I don't video everything that I make because you know some things I'm, I'm making to make money from and I don't have time to produce a video but I do have some videos coming up where you know I'll be showing you this machine so stay tuned for that. So there's my nanny 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 video uh, about this machine, uh, but I hope that it has answered some of your questions and, and maybe given you some insight into what I use to do the things that I do. Hey, if you've already subscribed to my channel, I really, really appreciate that. If you haven't, if you take a minute right now to find the subscribe button and go ahead and click it, that would really help me. I'd be very grateful. It kind of helps keep me motivated and inspired. Hope you enjoyed this video, maybe learned something and had some of your questions answered. As always, if you like my videos, remember to give me a thumbs up, leave me some comments, and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.